So in this session, we're going to look at data quality control. So what is data quality control? It's the process of inspecting, detecting, and resolving or cleaning data issues. And why do we do it? What are the benefits? So if there are issues in our data, we want to find them because this means that we can address them and fix them. Data quality is important no matter what type of data you're working with. Removing errors and inconsistencies increases reliability, accuracy, and credibility of the data. And that's what we want to achieve. We want our data to be high quality. We want quality evidence that will answer our questions. So looking at the data quality control workflow, it can take many forms, but generally a good process to follow is starting with inspecting the data, trying to uncover any problems, and then cleaning the data, verifying that the data has been cleaned correctly. Um, if it hasn't, we can go back and inspect again and clean. Um, and when we can verify, um, we document the data quality control. And that cycle can continue on. So there's no one fixed way to carry out data quality control. The methods that can be used for inspecting and cleaning data really depend on the type of data the amount of data, who's using the data. Um, but we're going to look at some of the more common data issues that often occur in data sets. So we're going to look at completeness, location data, duplicates, incorrect observations, data types, missing values, data levels, units of measurement, categorical data text formatting and contradicting values. So a good place to start with data quality control is to look at the completeness of the data. Is everything included that should be there? Do, does the data have the expected number of data records? You can check the total number of observations in your data set. You might know exactly how many observations there should be. Um, if it's not what's expected, maybe you don't have the final version of your data. Maybe you have a version that was taken during data collection, and there could actually be more data somewhere else. You can look at the number of columns and look for any gaps in the data. So in this example, data is being collected at four markets. And by looking at the count of the surveys, we can see that we don't have any data for market number two. Um, and if we know how many surveys there should be from each of the markets, we can also tell if we have complete data. Sometimes it's really helpful to visualize the data. So in this example, we have MET data from four different MET stations. And this graph is showing where we have data for the max temperature and where we don't. The gray parts are showing where the data is missing. So looking at station number one, um, maybe we already know that during 2020, there was a problem and that data wasn't recorded. So that's fine. We know that we don't have that data, but maybe by looking at this graph, we also see that there's data missing in 2019. Um, and perhaps there shouldn't be. So maybe the files for that data haven't yet been added into the data set. 
So that could then be resolved. If your data contains location data like GPS coordinates, actually mapping that can reveal issues. So even if you're not using the coordinates in your analysis, um, it's very helpful to plot them. In this example here, we have a survey that was to take place in rural areas. We can see um, in the bottom right corner, we have data points, lots of data points down here. Then we also have seven data points over here in this urban area. And so what's actually happened here is that data was collected during training. Maybe somebody was testing in the office and that data hasn't been removed from the final data set yet. Um, in this example here, we see that the importance of having longitude and latitude correctly labeled. Um, these coordinates on the left show us a location off the coast of Spain in the middle of the sea. And if they are switched, we get a location in Kenya. So that's something else that's important to look out for. A duplicate record is where the same piece of data exists in the data set more than once. Duplicates can be caused by input error. So maybe whoever collected the data or entered the data, it didn't know that it already existed. Or maybe the duplicates um, happened during merging of data and the duplicates should be removed. Incorrect observations should be removed or fixed. For example, if an age was recorded as 160 years, should that be 16 years or should it be removed? Um, and outliers as well, they're not incorrect observations. They are real observations. They shouldn't necessarily be removed, but they should be verified. It's important to check the data types so that the data can be properly used during analysis. Um, they can be checked by running summaries of the data. And if they're not correct, they need to be converted to the correct type. And here we have some examples of data types. We have numeric, we have dates, um, categorical, Boolean and text. Missing values should be handled carefully and they should not be ignored. Um, and it's important to understand why the value is missing to be able to take the correct course of action. Um, another issue is having different levels of data. So you can see here, we could have data at the level of the household. We could have um, many different members of that household. We could have data at plot level, and then we could have multiple crops per plot. So the key here is making sure that the data is correctly linked together using IDs, as this can cause lots of issues if they're not. Units of measurement should be standardized. 
So you can have different units for currencies, area, distance, and time could be measured, days and months. So we want to standardize these units. For example, here we have weight and it has been recorded in kilograms and pounds. So to be able to use this data, it should be converted to a single measurement unit. And you can see here that we have coffee harvested and the original units are listed there. And we've added a column in converting the harvest into kilograms. So categorical data, um, the text formatting should be standardized um, without spellings, should have consistent capitalization and no white space at the beginning or end. Here's an example of categorical variable. And here we would actually have seven categories instead of two, because these values are all different because they're formatted differently. Um, so by fixing the spelling, um, we get this it's looking a bit better. Um, using consistent capitalization. Um, doesn't really matter which you use, if you use lowercase, uppercase, capitalize, um, as long as it's consistent. And then by removing the white space at the start or end, we get this. So contradicting values can occur within the same record of data or across data sets that are linked together. Um, for example, in a data set containing the costs of producing a crop, the total column should equal the sum of the individual columns. So you might have a, a column for the costs of seed, labor, land, and so on. So it's possible that there could be errors and they need to be fixed. And moving on now to documentation. Um, it's really important to keep a log of data quality issues and to note any data cleaning that has been undertaken. Um, always keep a copy of raw data files and save process data as new files using appropriate file naming conventions. Um, it's good to keep track of these changes because errors could also occur during data cleaning. And if you've kept a good log and kept all the original files and those errors can be resolved as well. And then metadata should also include a record of any data that has been removed from a data set or modified. It should include any limitations of the data and a description of the level of the data quality. 